All right, just like we mentioned, we're having Nigerians from different spheres of life to talk to us about Nigeria at 58, how are Nigerians feel, feeling and how the country has fared so far. I have joining me now Professor Iberi on Wudiwe. We want him to also throw some light and some perspective to the discussion. Thank you for joining me, Prof. Thank you very much. Now, Prof, we'll start Nigeria at 58. How do you think Nigerians have fared so far? Well, first, let me say, um, Happy 58 yes, yes. Uh, for Nigeria and for all of us who are citizens here. Well, I think that um, it's a mixed bag. Um, there are ways in which we can say the country has done well, at least for staying as one country for 58 years, even though there have been hiccups along the way. And... Um, but there are many signs that we have not done very well, comparable to other countries that have also survived for this period of years. And I think that um, uh, our situation is uh, very frustrating for the poor among us at the present time. And um, a lot of the problems of this country cannot be fixed unless we get our politics right. And by that, I mean our governance. And even our own economic pains, due to the seriousness of the economic downturn that, have, that has happened over the years, not just limited to this government, um, has to be put at the feet of um, our politics. Yes, sir. So, Prof, now you said we have to get our politics right. For many, many will say the Nigerian economy has been relegated to the back seat in recent times as we're going into the electioneering season. Do you think our leaders have taken the economy as a priority down the line? Well, yes, they all talk about it, and, and they are right to say the economy should be priority. But my point is that we cannot get our economy right unless we get our politics right. Because a lot of the problems of the economy, uh, I'm a political economist, yes, and sir. most analysts always look at economic variables. But I think we should step outside the box and look at politics. Because it is the politics that's getting the economy to be so problematic. First of all, when the Nigerians are talking about restructuring, they are actually talking economics. Because a lot of the situation that we have comes from over-centralization of power in our system. And this over-centralization of power has economic significance. And therefore, if we want to do something about our economy, we must listen to the politics, uh, to the political pressures that people are bringing on and on increasing the democracy of the country. Because what we are observing, even at this moment, is a certain level of democratic recession. The recession we talk about since 2016 is about the economy, right? Yes. But there is a recession of democracy that is happening now. And if we allow that to take root, our economy will get even worse. The thing that happens with the economy all over the world is that you need a situation that is democratized. You democratize the decision making by not concentrating power at one point. Because if you concentrate power at one point, the people who benefit from that concentration will find it difficult to let power off their own hands. And because they don't do that, you don't benefit from an important economic concept known as creative destruction, which is a situation whereby there is innovation, and it is the innovation that actually creates economic wealth. Yes. And so if you don't let go some of the old systems, you will not innovate to accommodate new 
developments. And innovation has not been going on in this country. We have been borrowing all concepts. We have been borrowing technologies. We have been borrowing so many things. We are not able to internally innovate or to internally allow people who have the capabilities to flower and let their own creative abilities uh, uh, bring more benefits to themselves and to all of us at the same time. Now, Prof, do you think we can achieve some of this, these things you have mentioned with the commercialization of our political process in the country? That's exactly what I call, uh, you, you, have your point, you have your finger on it. That's exactly what I refer to as this system of democratic recession. Because if you descend to the level where you can now buy votes, where voting is for the highest bidder, it is a concentration of power. Because those people who can garner lots and lots of Naira will always buy themselves into power. So it doesn't matter whether they are able to do good by us. What matters is that they are able to concentrate power and keep themselves there by uh, having democracy by the highest bidder. Democracy by the highest bidder is democratic recession. And I think that's the recession we should be worried about. The fact that our democracy is about to be collapsed. It has not happened for a long time since 1999. And it's now in our presence going down the drain. And we're only commenting on it and doing almost nothing about it. Now, Prof, would you say Nigeria at 58, as we, mark, as we celebrate 58 years, are Nigerians thriving or surviving, or mere survival? Well, I'll say it's a good point. I, I, I think that we have great potential, but it's not enough to live on potential every year since 58 years. Everybody's talking about the potential of our country. Yes, we have potential, but why don't we translate that potential into development? Why can't we translate it into wealth? Why, can, why, why do we board last in all, uh, why do we maintain the last position in all good measures of improvement? Well, I think that uh, no matter what you say about uh, the situation we have at this hand, there are some innovative thinkers in the system, and if they are allowed to, uh, uh, to prevail, uh, at least within what is happening, we may have some, um, some situations of improvement in the future. But yes, we are vegetating a little bit, and uh, we should uh, do our best to allow new thinking and, and listen to the populace. When they say we want to have a voice, give them a voice. When they say we don't want our democracy to crash, don't let it crash. When they say they want, they want decentralization of power, decentralize power. You know, uh, give more voice to people in areas that you don't even know what happens there, like at the local government levels, at the state local government levels. Take some of the things that is happening at the center that is better done at the state levels yes. and, the, at, and at the local government levels and let them have it there. Let them fail and learn by doing instead of concentrating it at the center where people are suffocated, and innovation, most importantly, is suffocated. So, sir, do you, Prof, are you saying we need the state governors to also be up on their toes? Oh, yes. At every level of government, we must have decentralization. That's exactly what we're talking about. You know, why, why should I come from Oware to come and get a driving license here? Why? Does that make any sense to you? Why should I come here to get driving license here instead of getting it in Port Harcourt, instead of getting it in Lagos, instead of getting it in Kaurana Moda, in, in, in any other place? You know? Uh, so, so that is what we mean by decentralization. Let those things that can be done at the local level be done at the local level. And let people feel, have the freedom. And let us identify, let us identify places that have some kind of comparative advantage in one thing or the other, and let them do their best there. If they're making better shoes in Aba, let us let it do it. If they're making better uh, heights and skins in Kano, so let, let them, let them, let, let's promote it.
So first, we have to build institutions. There's a book written about why nations are poor. And so we're it, actually the poverty capital of the world currently. Oh, yes, yes, we beat India to it. But there's a book written about how na why nations are poor. And that book said that one reason nations are poor are that the rich nations believe in their institutions and they empower their institutions, but the poor ones don't. Because they don't empower their institutions, uh, it becomes a, a rule by man rather than a rule by law. Yes. Well, some people, of course, say, uh, give examples of, 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 of where strong systems sort of China has prevailed. But we don't have that tradition in our own, uh, uh, in, anyway, in all parts of Nigeria, don't have that kind of centralized structure. And even that book is arguing that China will not continue until, uh, in other words, its, its pattern of development is not sustainable. And it will become sustainable when it now decentralizes. So I really believe in strong institutions. I really believe in a system where we have, um, we, we diminish uh, concentration of power and have more parts of our variegated country because we are so different. We are at different levels of development. We are culturally different. We have different religions. We have different traditions. So in order to build us beyond being a country, I think we should have a system that forges out of these different Nigerians into one nation. Because there's a difference between a nation and a country. A nation refers to a people. Yes. We, should, we should have, I should be a Nigerian before I'm an Igbo man. True. And you should be a Nigerian before you're a Yoruba girl or Yoruba lady. And, um, you know, and so on and so forth, or a full and new woman, or whatever. So we, we need leadership that will forge all of us into one people, into one nation. Because country is nothing but a reference to geography and jurisdictions that, that, run, that run that uh, geographical territory. But we need to be a people. We need to be Nigerians. We need to be proud of Nigerians, uh, of, of being Nigerians. Yes. And we need to be patriotic. I think one thing that is lacking in this country is love of country. Really, nobody loves this country. But Prof, would you blame Nigerians? Well, the, the thing is that the, the question of leadership, you're, you're asking how yes. are we going to improve in the next 58 years. Yes. And what I'm saying is what we haven't done right yes that we should be thinking of doing right for the future. Yes. So what we should now try to do in the next 58 years, uh, starting from, two, <laughs> starting from, from 59 from 50, years. From, from, oh, it's 59 years, right? 58 years, we'll yes. to 59 years. Yes, but starting from 2019, whoever yes. wins, what that person should do that will impress me is these things, are these things that I'm saying. First of all, you have to create one Nigerian out of so many of us. You need that before you talk about economic development because those are just nothing but numbers. But you have to create the people that will make those numbers increase. Create a great, a high G, uh, uh, GDP, a G, GDP or, 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 or gross national product or gross domestic, domestic product. product, yes. So we have the highest one now, but are we the best no, we in the country? I mean, in the continent, we have the best, we have the highest uh, GDP, isn't it? But look, do you know how much, uh, 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 what percentage of the budget of, at the personal level of Nigerians that go to food, for instance? In Nigeria, it's close to 40% of personal budget goes to food consumption. In South Africa, it's just around 19. Do you think that this country is more powerful than South Africa? even though we have a higher, G, a higher uh, uh, GDP, how much is our own uh, per capita income compared to all these other places? So we really need, we have the potential to be 
one of the 20 richest countries in the world. But we have to do it by creating a country, by, by creating a people out of us, by creating a nation, by loving this country. And how do you now create a people out of us? It's by doing things that people see as fair, as just. That's how you get everybody to agree to one nation very, very solidly. And that's why you create patriotic Nigerians, because this is a very lovable country. We want to love it, but the system is not letting people to express that love. And you need, you know, it's like when you feel happy is when you achieve things sometimes, you know, when you feel a necessity and you have the freedom to do it, that's when you achieve something. We feel the necessity, but we have to love this country. We have to become patriotic. We have to end nepotism. We have to create us into one nation, and only the leadership can do it. Right. The leadership that is in Abuja. All right, sir. Thank yes. you so much. Sir. So, right. Prof, moving forward, I want you to send your best wishes to Nigerians as we celebrate 58 years. Okay, my best wish to Nigerians is this. Love your country, even if your leadership is messing up. Because one day, that leadership will go away. All right, need I say more? Prof. has said a whole lot for us. He said strengthen the institutions, say no to nepotism, make Nigeria not just a country, but a nation where we would love our nations and be patriotic. If Nigeria were a person, we would be approaching, of course, the retirement period as it is. But as a country, we are still experiencing lots of growing pains. But a lot of countries had long, had, had long periods. So if we all contribute our quota, Nigeria will be a very great nation. Like Prof. has rightly stated, we have to we have to make the system right and get things right. Even as we celebrate 58, 58 is a big number. We'll soon approach 60, and that's a diamond number. So we need to get it right this time around. All right, we'll, we'll take a short break here, and we'll, we'll return shortly. Don't go anywhere. As a people with one song, with one voice, 